Hello, welcome to my talk. This talk is on the physical modeling technology, Leonard's similitude, part two, internal test and examples. In this talk, the focus is on how we can achieve the similitude laws in the internal test, especially for the model test in the high speed flows. And in this talk, I will use some examples to illustrate how we can solve the problems. In reality, take an example of an airfoil uniformly fly in the steel air at the speed u0. If we watch the flying airfoil from a fixed point on the ground, the reference coordinate. We will see the problem like this. The flying airfoil is moving in the air, and for an air particle at a certain position, as seen here, at the time t0, the flying airfoil is far away from the air particle. Hence, the air particle is still and at the next time step t0 plus delta t, the airfoil is flying close to the air particle and push the air particle away. And at the time step t0 plus 2 delta t, the air particle is just above the flying airfoil, and it would move slightly to the airfoil surface as this. In such a reference coordinate, the problem is unsteady. We can look at the problem in different way. Suppose we take the reference point fixed on the flying airfoil. See here the reference coordinate. And in such a reference coordinate, the airfoil is fixed in the space, and the air is coming to the airfoil at the speed u0. And for an air particle in the same position related to the fixed airfoil, its motion in such a coordinate is the same for different time t0 plus delta t and t0 plus 2 delta t. So in this regard, the problem would be steady. Luckily, we have the Galilean transformation for these two different systems because of the uniform moving speed. So the Galilean transformation would guarantee these two dynamic systems are same. Therefore, this transformation would simplify the problem very much. And this is the same simplification as we have seen in the numerical modeling. Having said the Galilean transformation for the flying structure in the air and the models in the wind tunnel, see the example an MD11 model in the wind tunnel. Principally, this should be seen due to the Galilean transformation principle. In reality, there will be differences between the flying structure in the air and the model test in the wind tunnel, including the structure flying in the steel air. There is no turbulence in the steel air. But in wind tunnel, the incoming flow is always with some turbulence. The question is, is there effect of the turbulence in the free stream in the wind tunnel? The answer is yes. So, for the wind tunnel test, we need to reduce the turbulence in the free stream. For the wind tunnel test, the model is normally smaller than the flying structure. Therefore, we might have the problem of scaling effect. Ideally, we need to match the Leonard's number and the Max number in the wind tunnel test. 
The flying structure is in the open air, but the model test in the wind tunnel is in the confined walking section. Therefore, there might be blocking effect in the wind tunnel test. The solution would be a small model must be used for the relevant walking section. The structure flying in the space is free from any other objects, but the model test in the wind tunnel must be supported using some supporting system. Therefore, we might have the inference from the supporting system in the wind tunnel test. The solution is use the small or better supporting system. If we have two geometrically similar systems, here S1 and S2, with the scale factor epsilon given as this. So in the conventional wind test, the air density and the viscosity would be same for both systems, S1 and S2. That is, no 1, 0 equals to no 2, 0 and uh, mu1 equals to mu2. The Reynolds similitude requires this equation, and we can cancel out the density and the viscosity. So we have the expression as this. u to 0 for the scaled model would be the scale factor times u10. So that is, for the scale model, since epsilon is always larger than 1, thus the Reynolds similitude would require a higher air speed than that in the prototype. If we look at the Mach number similitude, it requires the equation as this. And since the speed of the sound in the conventional air is the same, A1 equals A2. Therefore, we have the requirement for the free stream velocity u20 equals to u10. This means the Mach number similitude would require a same air speed as that in the prototype, regardless what the scale factor is used. So from this analysis, we can see for a scaled model where epsilon would be larger than 1. In the conventional wind tunnel test, the Reynolds similitude and the Mach number similitude cannot be satisfied at the same time. This is quite similar as we have seen in the flow the similitude. But here, we don't have a simple solution for such a modeling problem as we have seen in the flow the similitude. But in this slide, we will see how the Mach number and the Reynolds number have the effect on the flows. Take the airflow pass an airfoil as an example. For the airflow, we have very different ranges of Mach number. In the low speed flow, where the Mach number is smaller than 0 0.3, then the classic incompressible flow can be taken, and the Mach number has no influence on the flow. And we have the subsonic flow, where the compressibility needs to be considered. And for a higher flow velocity, from transonic to supersonic to hypersonic flow, different shock waves and expansions would be developed, and the problems become more complicated. For the effects of Reynolds number on the flows. If the Reynolds number is very small, less than 100, the flow is a creep flow, where the viscous effect dominates the flow. When the Reynolds number is larger than 100, 
and less than 100,000. The vortex shedding and separation bulbs may appear. When the Reynolds number increases more to larger than 100,000 and less than 1 million, then we have the transition of flow. In this transition of flow, both nominal and the turbulent boundary layer exist in the flow. When the Reynolds number is larger than 1 million, the flow would become fully turbulent. The inertial effect would dominate in this fully turbulent flow with the delayed separation, delayed store, etc. In the winter model test, ideally, we need to achieve the correct Reynolds number and the Mach number so the flow can be correctly modeled. Or at least we need to model the flow in the same category. For instance, using a nominal flow to model a turbulent flow, you will never obtain the correct answer. Or if you use the low speed flow to model the transonic flow, it's a not correct choice. Next, we will discuss the flow modeling for different scenarios. The first scenario is the low speed flows, in which the Mach number has a very small or no effect on the flows. The first example is the flow in a horizontal pipe. Here, the Moody diagram is given based on the published experiment data for the fraction coefficient of the viscous flow in the horizontal pipe, CF, against the Reynolds number. So from this plot, we can see there are three different types of flows. The laminar flow, transitional flow, and the turbulent flows. When the Reynolds number is less than 2,300, the flow is generally nominal and the friction coefficient is calculated by this formula. And the pipe roughness has no effect on the friction coefficient. When the Reynolds number it's median. The flow is transitional, and the flow friction coefficient is the most complicated. When the Reynolds number is large enough, the flow becomes fully turbulent, and the flow inertial effects would dominate, and the corresponding friction coefficient would be a constant, see here, which would be independent of the Reynolds number. However, for different relative numbers, the corresponding Reynolds number for the for the turbulent flow is different. And the higher the relative numbers, the larger the friction coefficient can see here. The second example is the flow past the aerofoil NACA 23012 at the different Reynolds number between 1.7 to 4.5. All these flows should be fully turbulent. At the low angle of attack, say alpha less than 8 degrees, the lift coefficient CL would be independent of the Reynolds number, can be seen here. At the median angle of attack between 8 degrees to 12 degrees, the lift coefficient would be weakly dependent on Reynolds number. In the high angle of attack, 
alpha larger than 12 degrees up to the fourth door. The lift coefficient is strongly dependent on the Reynolds number. Basically, the higher the Reynolds number, the higher the maximum CL. The reason for this is the higher Reynolds number could delay the flow separation, thus a higher maximum lift coefficient. See here. The second scenario is the Mach number similitude. The scaling issues in the Reynolds number have been widely studied and correlated using the wind tunnel test data and the flight data. The method has been developed and the experience has been accumulated, but there is no perfect answer for this issue yet. The Mach number can be more difficult than scaling factor, especially in the high-speed flows with the evident compressibility. Even in the relatively low Mach numbers, when the Mach number is less than 0 0.8, we can still see the flow passes the airfoil. The supersonic flow can be generated on the airfoil surface, and thus the shock wave. And in the higher speed flow, strong shock waves and expansions might happen. And this phenomenon can be modeled if the correct Mach number is attended. In the next few slides, the Go Ahead project would be discussed. Go Ahead project is an EU FP project. Go Ahead short for generation of an advanced helicopter experimental aerodynamic database for CFD code validation. And uh, I participated in the project when I was with the University of Glasgow in the tunnel test and the database establishment. From the title of the project, we can see there are two main research activities. The wind tunnel test of a quarter helicopter model and the data collection, as well as the CFD code validation use the collect experiment data. In this talk, I will focus only on the experiment campaign. Here, I would like to thank Dr. Schwarz of DAR, who sent me the files and gave me the permission to use the go-ahead photos and the plots. The go-ahead helicopter model has been tested in the DNW wind tunnel of a walking section, 8 meter times 6 meter. The quarter helicopter model is an assembled model. The actual scale ratio is 1 over 3.88. The fuselage is the slightly modified NH-90 helicopter with 422 pressure sensors, 130 unsteady and 292 steady sensors and other measurement sensors. Four instrumented 7AD blades for the main rotor with 122 pressure sensors plus other measurement sensors. Two instrumented BO-105 blades for the tail rotor with 38 pressure sensors and other measurement sensors. In the experiment campaign, seven partners were involved in the wind tunnel test. The main reason for this, it would be very difficult for one partner to provide so many sensors and different 
data acquisition system. In total, there are more than 710 sensors on the test model, plus three PIV systems. Different data acquisition from different partners. The test operation is made by DIR, including model assembly, instrumentation, test signal transmissions, and data acquisition. One important issue is the data synchronization to ensure the test data have been synchronized for the different acquisition systems. Basically, in the experiment campaign, four typical flight conditions have been tested. In all winter tests, the tip Mach numbers for the main rotor and the tail rotor are all same as 0.617 and 0.563, respectively. The flight conditions include the low speed pitch up condition in which the helicopter forward speed is a Mach number of 0.059. The test includes the different angle of the fuselage. And the test includes the cruise and the tail shake condition with the Mach number of 0.204, in which the different fuselage angles were tested. For the dynamic store test at Mach number 0.259, the different fuselage angle were tested. And in the high speed condition with Mach number 0.28, only one fuselage angle is tested. The database was established by the University of Glasgow with the total test data more than 400 gigabytes, and the data post processor was provided for the database together with the comprehensive documentations for the database. More details can be found in the Go Ahead publication, the link here. The third scenario is the high Reynolds number wind tunnel test in which we will see how we can achieve the four Reynolds numbers or the large Reynolds numbers in the wind tunnel test. In the scale model test in wind tunnel, we may need to increase the Reynolds number of the model to a large number or even equaling to the full Reynolds number. For achieving the goal, based on the definition of Reynolds number given in here, we can increase the Reynolds number in different ways, such as increase the size of the model. So, we can increase the Reynolds number. But the question is, the model size would be limited by the working section size of the wind tunnel. We can increase the free stream velocity U0, but this would be limited by wind tunnel maximum velocity or the Mach number. We can increase the density of the flow in the wind tunnel for example, we can apply the high pressure in the wind tunnel, or we can reduce the temperature of the fluid in the wind tunnel. Based on this gas equation, we can achieve a large Reynolds number by pressured wind tunnel or the cryogenic wind tunnel. And we can also reduce the fluid viscosity. This can be done by reducing the fluid temperature in the wind tunnel, such as the cryogenic wind tunnel. This is different for the liquid, like water. Temperature would be increased for reducing viscosity, as shown in my talk, Fluid Similitude, the sonar tank. 
For achieving Mach number, we can use the Mach number definition. The velocity of free stream V0 divided by the speed of the sound. And the speed of the sound is given by this formula. Here, R and gamma can be regarded as a constant. As such, we can increase the Mach number of the model to a large number, even equaling to the Mach number of the prototype. There are two different ways. To increase the velocity of the free stream, the problem is we may have a limit of the wind tunnel maximum velocity. Another way for increasing the Mach number is reduce the temperature of the wind tunnel. Here, by this equation, we can see reduce the temperature, we can reduce the speed of the sound. So this is the special issue in the Creon Genic wind tunnel. To increase the Reynolds number in the wind tunnel test, one way is to increase the pressure in the wind tunnel, such as those pressurized the wind tunnels. The conventional pressurized wind tunnel may be operated under an applied pressure and the normal temperature. For instance, 15 degrees. Principally, the gas equation can be used for this situation. Here, the gas constant and the temperature both are constant. Thus, the air density would be proportional to the applied pressure. See this figure. So for increasing the Reynolds number in such a wind tunnel, for instance, the air viscosity would be taken as a constant since the change would be very small. Thus, the Reynolds number would be increased proportionally to the air density, thus to the pressure applied. A typical range of Reynolds number in such a pressurized wind tunnel can be seen in this figure from the reference 2. For instance, if we keep the Mach number 0 0.2 unchanged, so that in the conventional pressure, we might have the Reynolds number 1.7 million. If we apply the pressure 3.85 atmospheric pressure, the Reynolds number would be increased to 6.8 million. 3.85 times large in the Reynolds number. The more complicated wind tunnel test would be in the cryogenic wind tunnel, in which the temperature can be lowered to minus 150 degrees Celsius or lower. It should be noted, in such a low temperature, nitrogen would be used for the fruit, and the pressure can be increased to be more than 4 bars. Suppose the prototype structure in the conventional atmosphere in the air, so the properties of the air would be density 1.227 kg per cubic meter. The viscosity is about 1.8 times 10 power minus 5 pascals second. The speed of the sound is about 340 meters per second. So in the low temperature and the applied pressure, the nitrogen would have the properties as this. Density would be 11.5 kg per cubic meter. So the density is increased about 10 times. The viscosity here is reduced when compared to the viscosity at the conventional atmosphere. 
So it's about half of that uh, viscosity. And the speed of the sound is reduced to 220 meters per second. It's about 0 0.65 times of the speed of the sound in the conventional atmosphere. The Leonard's similitude requires the Leonard's number for both prototype and the scaled model are equal. RE1 equals to RE2. Use the definition of Leonard's number. We have the equation as this. Here, subscript 0 means the properties in the conventional atmosphere. This side of the parameter would be the parameters in the cryogenic wind tunnel. Based on this equation, we can calculate the scale factor epsilon given in this form. So we can calculate this scale factor based on the Leonard similitude as this. The Mach number similitude requires the Mach numbers for two systems are same M1 equals to M2 and use the Mach number definition. We have the expression as this. Thus, we can calculate the velocity ratio U0 divided by U equals to 1.53. So if we put this Leonard's and the Mach number similitude together, we can obtain the desired scale factor epsilon as this 13.11. This means in such a cryogenic wind tunnel, we can apply the scale ratio of 13.11 to guarantee both Leonard's and the Mach number similitude. In this slide, the European FP6 project FlyRed is introduced. FlyRed is short for Flight Leonard Number Testing. This project was led by the European Chansonic Wind Tunnel, a cryogenic wind tunnel. This plot is redrawn based on the data in the reference. Suppose we have an airfoil of a chord length 0 0.22 meter. In the conventional wind tunnel at the test condition, one atmospheric pressure at 12.5 degrees Celsius, the Leonard's number would be 8 million. If we apply the pressure in the wind tunnel, only up to 3.5 atmospheric pressure. The Leonard's number can be increased to 28 million. If we lower the temperature in the wind tunnel to minus 172 degrees Celsius at the normal atmospheric pressure, the Leonard's number can be increased to 50 million. If we combine both high pressure and low temperature in the cryogenic wind tunnel, this is the cryogenic wind tunnel used for. The pressure is 4.5 atmospheric pressure. The temperature is minus 172 degrees Celsius. The Leonard's number can be increased to 136 million. This is 56 times when compared to the conventional test condition. And this Leonard's number is in the range of the Leonard's number for the four aeroplane. 
for a given neuron's number, we can choose different combination of the pressure and the temperature for achieving the neuron's number. It should be noted that this type of wind tunnel test would come at a cost. It would be very expensive for a test in such a wind tunnel in both preparation and operation.